Comparative advantage. Comparative advantage is associated with a 19th century English economist, David Ricardo. Ricardo suggested that countries should specialize in producing goods and services for which they have a comparative advantage. While an absolute advantage means one country is more cost efficient than the other, comparative advantage relates to the extent to which one country is more efficient. Let's look at a simple example. Consider two countries producing only two goods, milk or sugar. Using all its resources, country A can produce 4 million litres of milk or 10 tonnes of sugar. Country B can produce 8 million litres of milk or 12 tonnes of sugar. We will assume that 1 million litres of milk is equal to 2 tonnes of sugar in terms of value. Let's say each is worth $200,000. Clearly, B is better at both and has an absolute advantage over A. So, should they trade? Well, in comparative terms, B has an advantage in terms of milk. It is 100% more productive in milk, but only 20% better at sugar production. So, in terms of the principle of comparative advantage, they should trade, with B specialising in milk, leaving A to produce sugar. Let's look at this. The chart shows that if they specialise and then trade, world output would be 18 units. However, if they divide up their resources to produce both, then total output would be 17 units. The relative value of world output is $2.6 million with specialization and trade and $2.3 million with self-sufficiency. Graphically, the gradient of the PPF reflects the opportunity cost of production. Different gradients mean different opportunity cost ratios and hence specialization and trade will be beneficial. However, the principle of comparative advantage ignores the cost of trade, including transport and any external costs such as air and sea pollution. It also assumes perfect mobility of factors and no diminishing returns, unlikely in practice as there may be barriers to entry for labor and producers. Specialization might create structural unemployment as some workers cannot transfer between sectors. Finally, modern trade theories such as gravity theory explain trade patterns more in terms of similarities between countries rather than differences, with countries trading most with those they are attracted to in terms of similar size, levels of deployment and cultural and economic proximity.